First and foremost, when, when you talk about thrips and the damage that thrips cause to ornamental plants and, and greenhouses, um, you know, they, they can be destructive just by the, the damage they cause from feeding on plants. But I think what most people think about are the, the viruses that come into play uh, because thrips are, are notorious, Western flower thrips especially is notorious for, for spreading virus. And, and uh, the genus of virus that's most important economically in our world is, is Tospo virus. Um, and, and then the, the most, I guess, uh, infamous or, or, <laughs> or most well-known Tospo virus is, is probably tomato spotted wilt virus. The impatience necrotic spot virus um, is first and foremost a virus that attacks ornamentals, and and so you know in, in patients are, are are you know real a really big one, but but also lobelia, riger begonias, snapdragons, lisianthus, cyclamen. There's a there's a, a a really large economically important host range. Uh, for impatient necrotic spot virus. Now um, that doesn't mean that tomato spotted wilt virus is still in the game, it, it very much is in the game because it goes to a lot of ornamental plants as well as, as vegetable plants. Um, key differences between the two viruses uh, is that in the tomato spotted wilt virus can be vectored by about, I, I wanna say it's gotta be around 10, maybe a dozen different species of thrips. So it's not just Western flower thrips, onion thrips, flower thrips. Um, there's a, a, a number of different in common thrips that, that will vector tomato spotted will. However, with impatience necrotic spot virus, that one is, is vectored only by Western flower thrips. And that's why Western flower thrips uh, continue to be the, you know, the, the predominant and, and the, more, the more challenging thrips uh, to, to manage in, in, in greenhouse production. The larval stages, the, the first and the second instar feed on the plant. And, and so if you have um, a virus infected plant, the thrips will inquire, you know, they'll take up that, that virus and then they become what's called viroliferous. They're capable of, of spreading the virus and they will continue to spread it wherever they feed. Um, so that, that process, that acquisition process within, within the larval stages, the instars, is usually about 15 to 30 minutes uh, before they become viroliferous and capable of, of, of transmitting virus. And then uh, what, what happens is when the adult stage comes on, the winged adult stage, if you will, that's where um, serious spread and, 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 and damage can occur because the, the winged adults will feed as well, but they're also capable of, of spreading the virus and they, and they can spread it within minutes. It's important to understand that the, the viruses, um, these TOSPO viruses, the, both the, the tomato spotted wilt and the impatience necrotic spot, um, are first and foremost, they're, they're spread on, on, on plant material and, and, and especially vegetatively propagated plant material. So all the cuttings that come in, if, if those cuttings are taken from virus infected plants, um, it's, it's downhill from there. Thrips are important in your greenhouse situation and your, in your localized environment, but most importantly is, is the material that you're bringing into your greenhouse. You wanna make sure that that's, that's virus free. There's probably a dozen different types of symptoms, but predominantly you'll get stunted growth. You'll get sometimes in some cases, chlorotic or yellow spots. In some cases you get necrotic or brown spots. Uh, you can see very bizarre genetic malformed appearance material. So, so what I mean by that is you can get like, mosaic, uh, blended islands of color in the plant where it just looks really, really bizarre. Sometimes you'll see ring spot patterns where, you know, I've, I've teased students in the past and said, you know, it looked like aliens or, you know, kids have been drawing on the plants. That's, that's a, kind of a dead ringer when you see the ring spots. Tunias can more or less be a, an indicator plant for, for, um, for these Tosco viruses and that they, they readily show symptoms. Um, and often, you know, you'll get these, these necrotic circles, um, associated with that white feeding damage on petunias. And that, that's a real 
good way to an, an indicator for for the presence of a virus in, in the greenhouse. The earlier you recognize the symptoms, the quicker you're you're going to be able to you know rogue those plants and try to try to get the problem under control. And and and, and the same goes for for thrips and monitoring thrips in the greenhouse, there are definitely biologicals that come into play. There's predatory mites, there's predatory nematodes, there's predatory bugs that, that will feed on, on thrips. And, and those are important um, when you have a biological component because you take, <clears throat> you take pressure off the conventional chemistry. When it comes to conventional pesticides, insecticides for, for controlling thrips. We have some really good products out there. I mean, I know that uh, the spinosad or conserve uh, for a long time was, was you know, highly effective at, at, at controlling thrips. Um, now, Cipro actually has a Hachi Hachi SC, which is tul tulpin pyrat. It's in a different um, insecticide resistant action class can be rotated with things like expire or conserve that have the spinosad. Um, and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're by rotating the different chemistries, you're minimizing the chance for resistance. But those, those are two off the top that are very effective um, on wet, on thrips, including Western flower thrips. Coverage is super important. When you're using these insecticides, you really have to get good coverage into the canopy and in, in, into the, those flower tissues to get, to get really effective control of, of, of the thrips.